Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com for sports bettors. Digitalassetlife.blogspot.com for crypt the crypto curious. And for crypto picks on a pay site, Dwyer70905.substack.com. Let's talk crypto. This video is for free. It's Saturday, December 4th, 2021. But remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me also say that crypto is down big right now. Understand that Bitcoin is below $50,000 a coin right now. Right, folks? I believe this is one of the best times to make a video because it's stressful moments like this that separate the wheat from the chaff. A few days ago, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler, formerly of MIT, talked with the media and pointed out that Bitcoin is competing with the US banking system. Folks, for those of you panicking, right, and it's a great day for those who, like me, want to buy the dip, right, or have bought the dip already. For those of you panicking, just understand what's involved here. We're not talking about a stock. There's no board of directors where a director beholden to a big stockholder is then going to try to pressure the others to make changes because Bitcoin has dropped dramatically in price the last 48 hours. Right, folks? There is no board of directors understand the power of decentralization. What there is is an ecosystem. Understand, things, prices aren't determined by fiat. There's no centralized group that's out there setting prices. Rather, there's a marketplace where there is price discovery. So, today, as Bitcoin is down big, as many people are panicking. What I want people to realize is that El Salvador is buying the dip. Bitcoin is still robust. It is still decentralized. It's proof of work, folks, not proof of stake. It still works and it hasn't been hacked. It has now transferred more value than PayPal. Understand, if you review some of the research materials from venture capitalists who've invested in Bitcoin, if you review the historical charts, you will find out what Pantera Capital has been telling its investors. But if you look at Bitcoin's historical charts, as I make this video, Bitcoin is undervalued by at least 30%. Right, folks, if you're going to buy a dip on one coin today, make it Bitcoin. Right, there's no central point of failure. This isn't a stock. You shouldn't treat it like a stock. They're not trying to gain market share in one small part of the marketplace. No, this is a system that is competing with the U.S. banking system. Let me point out, too, in my opinion, Gary Gensler has been too restrictive. Of course, he's SEC chairman in the United States. Just understand that Bitcoin is international. It is competing with world banking systems. In many ways, Bitcoin is more efficient than world banking systems. Right? There are those of us who believe Bitcoin eventually is going to replace bond markets. 
that Bitcoin is going to drain the risk premiums out of the housing market, out of the art market. Right? Simply put, view today as an opportunity. People who are panicking over the price level of Bitcoin just don't understand that nothing in life goes straight upward. That this is a paradigm shift. Right? On par with the emergence of cars years ago. On par with the birth of the personal computer. Right? This is a paradigm shift. We're not talking about a brand here, folks. We're talking about a systemic change. I remain extremely bullish on Bitcoin. I expect Bitcoin to not only go back above $50,000, but to get back to its historical trend line. Again, Bitcoin right now, according to Pantera Capital, is at least 30% undervalued. Now let's talk about a speculation in the crypto space. Right? I would use the word investment, but this carries higher risk because of the Goliath that this cryptocurrency, which is not in the top 100 in market price as I make this video, is taking on. Right? It's going to be a big fight long term, in my opinion. Right? Ultimately, I believe Goliath is going to fall, is going to have to make room in the marketplace for this cryptocurrency upstart I'm about to mention. Now, full disclosure, like many of you, I'm an investor. I don't just own crypto. I own some legacy finance stocks, right? I also own some precious metals, right? I'm somewhat diversified. Well, one of the stocks I own one of the companies I love using is Amazon. Right? Make no mistake, Amazon is a Goliath. And as Amazon investors know, one of the most lucrative parts of Amazon is Amazon Web Services, known as AWS. They give a lot of companies cloud infrastructure. In other words, if I'm a customer of AWS and I'm selling digital goods, could be videos, could be books, could be software, AWS will enable me to store that in the cloud. AWS will be able to help me with fulfillment. Customers will be able to reach me and order my digital good through AWS, which will then be able to deliver that digital good to someone's tablet, computer, digital database. Now, just to understand, I know many of you view Amazon as a retailer, right, or a delivery service. But AWS, in 2020, their cloud infrastructure business had sales of $45.37 billion. That was in 2020, folks. We're now at the end of 2021. As you could imagine, as the world goes more digital, Amazon if it's following its historical trend line, has made much more than $45.37 billion in sales off of AWS in 2021. They are a Goliath. Let's talk about how much of a Goliath. You understand that chips are needed to process digital goods right to do the computational work in dealing with digital goods and services AWS is so big right now that they're developing in-house chips to take on think of the biggest chip makers Intel AMD would it surprise you 
that Amazon has its own Gravitron chips to take on Intel and AMD. Would it surprise you that they're even taking on NVIDIA with the Tranium chips that Amazon has produced in-house? In other words, their AWS business is so lucrative that Amazon has decided that they're going to do some things in-house, even with chip goliaths that have been around for years. Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, even with chip giants selling Amazon chips. Amazon has reached the point where they're developing some of their chips in-house. This is on par, of course, with Amazon now having its own airline to help Amazon deliver Amazon Prime products. Well, now we have a sea change. Something called the blockchain. We're all, myself included, trying to figure it out. Understand the blockchain takes us away from a centralized entity like Amazon handling cloud infrastructure and product fulfillment to now dealing with folks with computers who can get an ownership share of the enterprise by investing in cryptocurrency coins. We're getting a level of societal computing where now you can have not just one centralized database run by some corporate giant like Amazon, but you could actually have several people with computers collectively forming a decentralized database that can compete against Amazon in the marketplace and that can net people the participants, profits, for the computational contribution that they have made to the enterprise, right? As well as the capital investment they have made to the enterprise by purchasing the currency used in the enterprise. Now let's talk about a speculative play. It's in the top 200 in market share. I need for you to fully understand the upside involved here, right? We're going here for 10x, 20x, right? Big profits. Profits perhaps as big as Amazon's profits have been x-wise over the years. Right? You can expect a bumpy ride. You can expect hiccups. You can expect quick responses in the marketplace from Amazon and the others who are now in the cloud computing. Right? Microsoft comes to mind. Folks, this is the deep end of the pool. If you're a speculator like I am, then you have to be drawn, given the size of this market here, the computer infrastructure web services market, you have to be drawn to the proof of work, yes, decentralized cryptocurrency known as Flux. F L U X. I encourage people to look it up on coinmarketcap.com. Right now, in all of crypto, it has the 174th biggest market cap. Right, it's outside the top 100. Let's just say it's making up space. Now, this is not for the squeamish. As I make this video, Flux is down 10%. You heard me right, 10% today. Right, this is for speculators with a high risk tolerance. What you're going to find is that Flux is already delivering infrastructure for the Kadena Network. That's another crypto you need to know. K-A-D-E-N-A. -E Again, that's K-A-D-E-N-A. -E 
right? And Flux is generating more than $50,000 monthly from helping the Kadena Network, right? Understand, too, it also has partnered with Firo, F-I-R-O, and PreSearch, P-R-E-S-E-A-R-C-H. Now, just to understand what this upstart, this decentralized upstart, and you know my belief, we're in an age right now where crypto investors are not putting a proper value on decentralization. Right? Everyone is into the transactional speeds that centralized cryptocurrencies like Solana give you. Right? Full disclosure, I own some Solana. As I said, I'm diversified. I'm an investor like many here. But one of the best things that Bitcoin has going for it, one of the best things that Flux has going for it, and Cardina, is the fact that they're all proof of work, not proof of stake. You're dealing with a mining community that's self-selected, that's decentralized, right? You have the mining power, you want to become part of the mining community of Flux, you can do it. Right? There is an ecosystem here. Understand, too, that it's growing by leaps and bounds. Right now, you have more than 2,200 nodes on the Flux network. Understand, too, that we're at a time, since this is digital, since we're at the point of Web 3.0 smart contracts, we're at a point in time where, theoretically, Flux can be infinitely scalable, able to deal with any programming language. Understand, too, that Flux is already Flux tokens are already able to be used on the Fusion cross-chain bridge. For those of you who like cryptocurrency wallets that are advanced, that can hold several different types of cryptocurrencies, that can deal with centralized and decentralized exchanges, Understand that part of the Flux ecosystem is the Zellcore non-custodial wallet. Zellcore is spelled Z-E-L-C-O-R-E. And of course, understand, you have the Flux coin. That's advanced. It has governance features. It has node collateral features. Right? It offers you payment staking capability for hosting services and since it's distributed through proof of work of course it's decentralized so at a time when cloud infrastructure is a vibrant market that has some of the deepest pocketed tech companies the giants Amazon Microsoft, for example, involved in it. You have a decentralized competitor, folks. Don't sell decentralization short. You have a decentralized competitor. You have miners with computing power. You have cross-chain capability. You have infinite scaling smart contracts right folks the crypto competitors are in the room they want a piece of this big market in my opinion one of the best positioned is flux you can get it today for a dollar and 51 cents a coin it's already and keep in mind, the cryptoverse has thousands of cryptocurrencies. It's already in the top 200. 
I believe you need to give this coin a very hard look. Right? If you're a speculator, if you look back in history and you wish you would have been in Amazon after it dipped around 2000, right? 20 years ago, 21 years ago. If you wish, after it went from $100 a share to like $6 a share, if you look back and you think to yourself, man, I wish I were bold enough, given what they were trying to do, to be in them when they were low down. If you wish you were in Bitcoin in 2009, right? Think about it. You had technology that prevented a double spend, which was digital. At a time of the emergence of laptops and the internet and internet commerce, right? Think about how asymmetrical that was. Just the fact that you couldn't double spend on Bitcoin. Someone could have said, okay, when Bitcoin was $2 a coin, someone could have said, why don't I just get a dollar worth? Right? Or, why don't I just get $100 worth? Let me get 50 and see where this goes. Think about where you'd be today. Folks, as I research and study market patterns, and as I look at the cryptoverse, as paid subscribers on Dwyer70905.substack.com know, Right? There are some asymmetrical bets here. I'm not saying they'll all work out. This is speculation. I need for you to understand the high risk involved. I need for you to understand that the market players also include some of the biggest, most influential companies in the world. Right? Amazon, Microsoft, they're international companies now right just understand the market opportunity ahead for flux right if flux can get even five percent five percent of the AWS market the cloud market here cloud infrastructure market Wow many people, many early investors in Flux will be very wealthy. Right? So, I'm just talking about what interests me. Please do not consider anything I say in this video to be investment advice. Rather, I'm just sharing with you what I'm pursuing. Right? What I'm considering at times. Here, I, I actually own some Flux. I, I personally believe, and I'm someone who owns some Microsoft, excuse me, some Amazon. I don't think I own Microsoft right now at the moment. But I'm someone who believes that cloud infrastructure is still in its infancy. If you believe that we're going to enter a realm where the metaverse grows exponentially, well, in my opinion, necessarily, cloud infrastructure is going to grow exponentially. Certainly, Amazon is well positioned, but Amazon is centralized. I believe that opens the door for a decentralized, more nimble competitor. I've bought some Flux. Again, the symbol is FLUX. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I believe long-term proof of work is going to trump proof of stake. I believe that's a decided advantage that Bitcoin has over many of its competitors, including Binance Coin, which I also own some of, which I'm bullish on, but which I don't believe has the long-term upside of Bitcoin, right? As well as many of these other Ethereum killers, right? Solana, Avalanche, I own them. But I believe proof of stake long term is going to prove out to be a weakness. And I do believe more features 
will gravitate to Bitcoin, including transactional speed. Right? You already have the Lightning Network, folks. I believe that's just the start. Right? I'll be surprised if privacy features and others don't gravitate toward Bitcoin. Right? You've heard former presidential candidate Hillary Clinton give a speech where she was concerned about the emergence of the cryptoverse. Right? She feels that that shifts too much power away from legacy finance and governments propped up by legacy finance, right? Fiat currencies. She understands what's at stake here. Folks, a big battle is ongoing, right? You don't want to place all your chips in proof-of-stake entities that can shut down their own blockchains, like Solana has done multiple times. Right, Solana will make a lot of people a lot of money. But here we're looking at a longer term vision. It may seem trivial right now, but the fact that Flux, Kadena, Bitcoin are proof of work give them an advantage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.